So let's see what it takes to actually build an application in Azito. Here I fired up the interface, and you can see a couple things right away. One, this big blank area is where I'll enter the design. Over in this area is my library elements. In this case, I only have the primitive library elements loaded. And the other one is I'm working on the x86 platform. So notice it said it's loaded a system description for the x86. So one of the first things I'm going to do is bring in a even more comprehensive library set called the core library. And so when you go in, you'll find core library as the element. I click on it, and up pops the core library or core lib under my libraries tree. And again, this is available as a directory tree structure, or you can also right click and you can say uh, sort by name, and you can see all the, the various elements in the library that way. Sometimes this is faster for finding things, but I usually prefer the tree view. So one of the things I'm going to go grab is something out of the arithmetic operations library and I want the asynchronous version, meaning it's non-clocked. And I'm going to grab a multiplier. So here's my little multiplier. And I'm just going to click on that to bring it up so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to, let's say I want to bring in a number and square it. So I'm going to connect an output here. And notice when I touch it, it automatically takes the name on the output and applies it here. But if I want to change the name, I just right click and I'm going to call this x squared and click OK. And I'm going to do the same thing on the input side. So here's my input, bring it in, tap it to the connection, the name automatically propagates, but I'm going to change this to x. And again I can drag this someplace else. And I want to connect up the B input of the multiplier to the same signal. And notice it put this little cross here indicating that it is connected and I can move that that wire any place I want. Let me move this out just to make it nice and pretty. And there's my multiplier. So notice th that uh, since I've specified this, I didn't specify what the data is that goes into X or comes out on X squared. I just said data comes in, data goes out. In most programming languages, at this point, you would have had to specify the data type. So whether it's a, a byte or an integer or a floating point number. In uh, Azito, I don't have to do that. I do that when I actually build the application, or in this case, synthesize it. So Azito has a wide variety of various data types available. But let's say I want to build this for a byte. Okay, So there I built it for a byte. How do I know that? Well, I can also go simulate right away. So I click the little play button, and up immediately pops uh, some scroll boxes. So here's a uh, one for the x side. Here's one for the x squared. Notice I said it was a byte, so it goes from 0 to 255. And the output, because I've got uh, 8 bits here, will be a 16-bit value, or 0 to uh, 64K. And I can check to make sure my function actually works. So 0 times 0 is indeed 0. I go to 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and so on. So I can test things in, re in real time in Azito, make sure they all work. Now another cool thing is I can actually change how the data appears. So I can change this scroll bar to a spinner edit box. So again, I can just toggle up and down. And I can do the same thing over here, have it uh, become a text box or you know all, all kinds of different outputs we'll we'll see we'll see more about this a little bit later okay so now I can save that sheet if I want so I'm going to save that sheet as x squared and I've done this once before so I'm going to get a little message saying that don't want to replace it yep I do okay and the other thing I can do is turn this sheet into a new design element so I'm going to convert sheet to an object. And it allows me to make some changes here if I want. And there's my x squared as part of my composite objects. So now I can use that same function as part of another application. 
So let's let's expand on this a little bit further. So I have one layer of hierarchy I've already built and tested. Now I'm going to bring in another function. So I've got an output coming from x squared. And to drive that, I'm going to go use one of the controllers. And this controller, all it does is count. Again, I'm going to zoom in here just so we can see it a little bit better. The, uh, the count function has a count output, which I'm going to drive into x. It has a count by, and I know it's a count by because if I right click on it, on the uh, primitive, I can see the inputs and outputs, and I can see the documentation for this particular module. So it has a variable count value, and it also has a clock input, an enable, and a clear. Now by default, if I don't attach the clock input, it'll attach it to the system clock. Uh, on the enable, if I don't connect it by default, it's always enabled. And I'm just going to change the names here. So we'll call this count by, and we'll call this enable. And there's my entire design. And again, if I want to go build it, at this point I tell it what kind of data I'm going to expect. So I'm going to build it for a small data value just so that we can see something interesting. So let's do it for a 6-bit binary value. Okay? Again, in Azito, you're designing for a generic target with all the flexibility in the world. So you're not constrained to a specific number with data width or a specific data type. You can define that later on or constrain it for your specific application. You're designing math or algorithms at this point. You're not actually designing implementation. Okay, so I, I've built it. Now I can simulate it. And here's my count by value. And here's my enable. And here's my output. So I'm just going to go change these buttons a bit. So I'm going to make this an actual button. And for count by, I'm going to change that to a spin box. And I'm just going to make this a text box at the moment. So now I can go test this function. So if I enable it, it's not doing anything. Why isn't it? Well, because the count value is 0. If I change it to 1, notice I get some count values out here. Change it to 2. Apparently it's counting faster, but I really can't see that. What I can do, though, is change this to a different type of output called a graph, which really is it's useful for these type of applications. So let me re-enable it. We can see, oh, okay, well, something's happening out there. If I go to 1, it seems to be count uh, half as slow. If I go faster and faster and faster, it, it counts even faster. So it looks like the counter is actually working, and we're seeing our, our square value on the output. How do I know it's squared? Because I kind of see this uh, upward, uh, upward sloping ramp. Okay, so I can disable the counter and automatically stops. So this is, in Azito, we call this the rapid development environment because you can uh, quickly put things together, you can test them out, you can interact with, with the design and make sure it, it works the way you expect it. Now, I mentioned that Azito allows you to, to be independent of uh, the data type. One of the things you can also do with Azito is you don't have to operate just on scalars. So I'm going to bring in a different type of value. So I'm going to bring in a list to feed my squared value. And again, I'm going to connect that up to an input and another input. I'm going to call this one A. I'm going to call this one B. And again, I'm going to go build it. Uh, we'll keep the same data type in this case. And when I push the play button, I'm going to change this to or back to a text box. You'll see in a second. So I've got two values, A and B. A is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. B is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. And if I change a value, you notice that it also changes the, the uh, associated one in the list. So this is a case where instead of operating on, scal or on a, a scalar, I can bring in a vector or an array to a function. And I only have to specify it once. It automatically knows that it needs to build multiple implementations of that. So in this case, I've effectively built and tested a, uh, a specific function. Now, I've, I've been doing all this in 
in the x86 environment. So it's actually been simulating on my uh, computer. Now if I wanted to change to a different system, all I have to do is load a different system description. And uh, so the default one I'm using here is the x86. Uh, so here's the Zito system descriptions. Here's one for an Opal Kelly board. And the specific one is this 3050. And I actually don't have it connected at, at the moment, so it'll pop up with a message saying I'm, I'm not physically connected to hardware, so I'm just going to ignore that. And that's how quickly I can retarget a design to another platform. So if I want to synthesize, I do need to resynthesize for an alternate platform. And that's all there is to it.